Ever wondered what happens when your ex finally comes crawling back, but you transformed into a whole new person? Imagine this, you've been through the ringer, healed your wounds, and emerged stronger than ever. Now, just when you're feeling unstoppable, guess who decides to reach out? Someone from your past, who once left you hurt and confused, suddenly feels the pangs of regret and is drawn to your newfound strength. But here's the twist, while you're basking in your own glow, they're lost in their own darkness, wondering why you're so different now. Intrigued? Stick around to discover how their sudden reappearance might just turn the tables and what you need to know before deciding if they deserve a second chance. This is a story of transformation, regret, and the power of self-love that you won't want to miss. Let's take a look at what's coming through for you. Communication Well, are you ready for this? Get set, because communication is coming your way. This happens after you've been so strong, after you've reached a place where you finally feel really good about yourself. You're in a spot where nothing can break you, shake you, or move you anymore. You've worked so hard on healing yourself from a situation that was so painful, frustrating, and sad, especially with someone who didn't do enough for you. You've reached that Five of Swords moment, where you feel strong and unshakable. Picture this, it's like the image of a woman brave enough to put her hand in a lion's mouth. I'm not saying you're literally going to do that, because, let's be honest, that's pretty scary. But it's a powerful analogy. It shows how strong you've become. You've grown so much, and now, when you're at your strongest, that's when the communication you've been waiting for will come. Once you reach a point where you feel unbreakable, like nothing can shake you or pull you down, that's when something interesting happens. A person from your past, someone who has hurt you deeply, will suddenly feel a strong urge to reach out to you. This person, who didn't treat you well before, will start to feel a heavy sense of regret. They'll think back on how they left things between you two and realize just how wrong they were. The way they treated you and the harsh words they said will weigh on them, filling them with guilt and shame. This shame won't be just a passing thought. It will linger and grow until it's too much for them to bear. They'll feel a need to make things right or at least to talk to you again, to ease that discomfort they feel. They'll start to wonder about you, what you're doing now, how you're feeling, and whether you've moved on from the pain they caused. They'll be curious about your life and whether you're still affected by what happened between you two. This curiosity and guilt will drive them to want to communicate with you, hoping to understand where you stand and possibly seeking some form of closure or reconciliation. When you reach that point where you've worked so hard on yourself, you'll feel like a whole new person. Your energy will be on fire, strong, powerful, and unstoppable. It's like you're on another level, almost like you're on a different planet because you've grown so much. And here's the thing, people can sense that. They can feel when someone's energy has changed, when it's become stronger and more vibrant. It's like sending out invisible signals that say, I'm not the same person anymore, I'm better, stronger, and wiser. This person from your past, the one who didn't treat you right, will start to notice these changes in you. They'll wonder what you're up to now who you're talking to, who you're spending time with, and what's going on in your life. They'll feel like they're missing out on something big, because your energy is so magnetic, so powerful. They'll sense that you're in a much better place, and it will make them curious, and even a bit anxious. They'll be thinking, something's different here, something's changed. I need to know what's going on. This shift in your energy will draw them in, making them want to reconnect with you just to figure out what's happened and why you seem so much stronger and happier than before. When this person starts to notice the changes in you, they'll be filled with questions. They'll wonder, what's going on in your life? What's changed? Why do you seem so different? 
They'll feel the strong urge to find out, because your new energy will be so powerful that it triggers something deep inside them. With the Judgment card, it's like a wake-up call for them. They'll realize they can't ignore you anymore, and they'll feel almost forced to reach out because they'll be thinking, something's definitely changed, and I need to know what it is. But when they do finally come forward, you're going to be confused. The Two of Swords shows that you'll be left wondering, why now? Where were you when I really needed you? Why didn't you come to me when I was hurting, when I was in a dark place and needed someone the most? It's going to feel strange that they're only coming back now, after you've done so much healing on your own. Their sudden interest will make you question their motives and timing, and you might feel torn about how to respond. When this person finally comes back, you'll be left thinking, why now? Where were you when I was hurting the most? When I was broken and needed someone, you weren't there. And now, after all the work I've done to heal and grow strong on my own, now you decide to show up? It's almost like you'll feel a mix of shock and anger. You might think, how dare you come to me now? You didn't care when I was falling apart. You'll be so confused, wondering, what's going on? Why are you here now? And the thing is, they'll be surprised by your reaction too. They've always thought they had you wrapped around their finger, that you'd always be thrilled to see them. They might expect you to welcome them with open arms, just like before. But now, you're different. You're stronger, more independent, and not so easily swayed by them. They'll be taken aback, like, wait, you're not excited to see me? And this shock will go both ways. The Eight of Pentacles shows that they're going to start chasing you, trying to win you over, working hard to get back into your life. They'll want to move things forward with you, to progress and fix what was broken. But the irony is that before, when you were desperate for them to make an effort, to work on the relationship, they did nothing. Now that you've moved on and become stronger, they suddenly want to put in the work. This will leave you feeling both surprised and frustrated as you try to make sense of their timing and decide how to respond. Now you're thinking, really? Now that I've finally accepted that I don't need anything from this person, they suddenly want to try? It leaves you feeling so confused, like, what's going on? Why now? Why didn't they care when I needed them most? Why now, when I've moved on? The Moon card shows all the emotional energy swirling around. It's like their feelings are finally catching up to them. They're starting to feel bad, realizing they messed up. The tables have turned. The power dynamic has shifted. The Three of Swords reminds you of that heartbreak you once felt that deep pain when they let you down. But you healed from it, you grew stronger. The moon also represents cycles and phases, just like the moon in the sky. It reminds you that emotions and situations go through changes. What was once painful has now become your strength. Now, they're the ones feeling the weight of what they did, the regret sinking in. They're the ones who are lost and confused, trying to figure out how to get back into your life. The moral of the story is clear, the tables have turned. The pain you once felt has shifted to them, and now they're the ones left wondering what went wrong. So, you were once in a phase where everything felt dark and heavy, like the moon hanging in a lonely night sky. But now, you're moving into a phase where things are bright and warm, like the sun rising after a long night. You're starting to feel better, more positive, or maybe you're working towards that brighter place. And in the future, you'll get there, feeling the sun's warmth in your life. But here's the twist, the person who once hurt you, who moved on thinking everything was fine and dandy, they're now the ones feeling the weight of sadness. They thought they could just keep shining like the sun, but now their light has dimmed. They're feeling like the moon, lost in the dark, just like you once did. It's like you've traded places. 
You were the one struggling in the shadows, and now you're basking in the sunlight of your own strength. Meanwhile, they're the ones left in the cold, feeling the pain of losing you. This is the big change that has happened. The tables have turned. Now, you stand tall, confident, and strong. You're happy and fulfilled within yourself, loving yourself in a way that they probably never expected. You found your own light, and that's something they can see, and feel, themselves. The Ace of Cups shows that you are overflowing with love for yourself, for life, and for the people who treat you right. This self-love and positive energy you have is making this person from your past realize they've lost something special, your energy. Here's how it works. When you focus on yourself and let go of needing someone else to make you happy, you actually attract good things. It's like magic. When you stop chasing and start enjoying your own life, things start getting better. That's when people notice the change in you. They see how happy and strong you are and want to come back. Right now, you're on a path to move forward and make your life better. The person from your past is coming back because they see your positive energy and feel the loss of it. They might want to reconnect because they see how great you're doing. But what happens next is up to you. If you want to give them another chance, they will definitely put an effort to make things work. If you're ready to keep moving forward on your own, that's okay too. The choice is yours. They will try to work their way back into your life. Let things unfold naturally. Only give them as much effort as they give you. They need to rebuild your trust after everything that happened. It's not your job to chase after them or jump through hoops to make them happy. Your main focus should be on yourself. You are your number one priority. Imagine a dedicated shepherd leading his flock through a wide open field. The land has a varied terrain, featuring gentle hills and stony trails. Yet among these, there are areas of lush greenery and peaceful waters. Despite the varied terrain, the shepherd's constant presence ensures safety, offers guidance, and provides comfort to the sheep. With skill and patience, he navigates them through every hurdle, tirelessly leading them to places where they can rest and eat. This clear picture of the shepherd's faithful guidance wonderfully shows how God takes us to peaceful waters. Today, I will share how God, our divine shepherd, guides us through the meadows of life, offering his protection, provision, and peace. I'm also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus, so watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. As Psalm 23 verse 2 beautifully puts it, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. This verse sets the tone for our journey together delving into the depths of this scripture to uncover the profound ways in which God gently guides us through life's challenges, leading us to places of rest, renewal, and profound peace. Now, let's explore the shepherd's guidance. Like a shepherd who watches over his flock with vigilant care, God watches over us. He knows each of us intimately, understands our every need, and guards us against the perils of life. In John 10 verse 14, Jesus declares, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. This deep and personal knowledge ensures that his guidance is perfectly suited to our individual paths. Our life's journey often takes us through valleys of hardship and shadow, as well as over the high plains of joy and ease. But in every circumstance, the shepherd's presence is a constant comfort. He doesn't lead us into the valley to abandon us but to walk beside us, guiding us through to brighter days. Psalm 23 verse 4 reassures us, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even in the midst of weariness and challenges, the shepherd knows when to lead us to quiet waters and green pastures for rest and restoration. God, too, understands our limitations. 
He sees our weariness and leads us to places where our souls can be refreshed and our strength renewed. In Matthew 11 verses 28 to 29, Jesus extends an invitation, saying, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Just like the shepherd provides for his flock, ensuring they are fed, protected, and rested, our Heavenly Father provides for us, offering both physical sustenance and spiritual nourishment, guidance in times of uncertainty, and comfort in times of distress. In His presence, we find the ultimate sanctuary, a place where our hearts can be at peace and our spirits can soar on wings like eagles. This profound tranquility represented by the still waters goes beyond physical rest. It symbolizes deep, soulful peace. In these divine moments of stillness, life's turmoil fades away, and we find ourselves surrounded in God's serene presence. The still waters become a sacred oasis where worldly noise is silenced, and God's voice becomes clear and soothing. Philippians 4 verse 7 promises, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This peace is like a protective shield around us, keeping us safe in the midst of life's storms. Additionally, the still waters offer us a reflective surface, allowing us to see the truth of our inner selves more clearly. In this serene environment, we can introspect, aligning our hearts with God's will and committing ourselves anew to His path. Lamentations 3 verses 40 to 41 urges us to examine our ways and turn back to the Lord reminding us of the importance of self-reflection and spiritual realignment. At the still waters, the shepherd ensures that his flock is not only rested but also well-nourished, just as God doesn't lead us there merely for physical rest but for spiritual nourishment. Here, he feeds us with his word, quenching our thirst with his spirit and preparing us for the journey ahead. John 4 verse 14 tells us of the promise of Jesus assuring us that whoever drinks of the water he provides will never thirst again. This water becomes a fountain of everlasting life within us, springing forth with renewed vigor and purpose. Immersed in this sanctified place of replenishment, we are invited to delve deep into God's wisdom and love. The still waters are more than just a haven for the weary. They are a sanctuary where the soul is reawakened and invigorated by the living waters flowing from God's throne. Here, we lay down our burdens, fears, and doubts, exchanging them for His unmatchable peace and boundless grace. As we drink deeply from this divine source, our vision clears, our purpose realigns, and our resolve strengthens. Ready to face the path ahead, we embark on the journey to the still waters, knowing that though the path may be rugged and uncertain, the shepherd walks it with us. Trusting in Him, we find the strength to follow, leaning not on our own understanding but acknowledging Him in all our ways. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 becomes our guiding light, teaching us to trust wholeheartedly in the Lord, who directs our paths. Just as the shepherd carries a rod for protection and a staff for guidance, God uses His Word and His Holy Spirit to lead and comfort us along the way. In His care, we find security and assurance knowing that He walks with us through every valley and wilderness, guiding us safely to the still waters of restoration. Hebrews 4 verse 12 serves as a powerful reminder that the Word of God is alive and potent, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to the core of our being, discerning the very thoughts and intentions of our hearts. His Word convicts us when we stray, corrects our path, and serves as our guiding light. Additionally, his Spirit provides comfort, guidance, and counsel, ensuring we're never alone on our journey. As we embark on the path to still waters, we're accompanied by the unwavering presence of our Shepherd. Even in the darkest valleys or during the toughest climbs, His comforting assurance never wanes. Psalm 139 verses 7 to 10 reinforces this truth, highlighting that there's nowhere we can go where His Spirit isn't with us guiding and upholding us in every circumstance. 
This unbreakable companionship fills us with a profound sense of security and belonging, empowering us to face life's challenges with courage and grace. Each step of our journey is illuminated by His promises, and His strength becomes our own, enabling us to overcome any obstacle we encounter. Now, let's delve into the rejuvenating waters of renewal. These waters aren't merely to be observed but experienced firsthand. God invites us to immerse ourselves fully in His presence, to drink deeply from the wellspring of His Spirit. In these living waters, we discover true life and find the strength needed for today's challenges, along with hope for tomorrow's uncertainties. Isaiah 55 verses 1-2 emphasizes the abundance available to us in God's presence, far surpassing anything the world can offer. This spiritual feast satisfies the deepest longings of our souls, renewing our minds and cleansing us from within. Romans 12 verse 2 encourages us to resist conforming to the patterns of this world but instead to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, aligning our thoughts and actions with God's perfect will. As we partake of the still waters, our perspective shifts and our lives bear fruit in abundance. Rooted in Him, we flourish, manifesting the fruits of the Spirit in our words and deeds, blessing those around us with His love, joy, and peace. Psalm 1 verses 2 to 3 speaks of finding joy in God's teachings and promises that those who do will flourish like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season and prospering in all they do. In our growth, we become beacons of God's love, shining brightly in a world often clouded by darkness. As we deepen our understanding of His Word and remain rooted in His presence, Let's also extend his love and hope to those around us who are thirsty for spiritual nourishment. By doing so, we not only affirm our own faith but also contribute to spreading seeds of faith that will bloom into abundant spiritual gardens for generations to come. Throughout life's journey, filled with ups and downs, we find purpose and serenity under God's watchful care. Our shepherd doesn't just lead us, he walks beside us offering protection and support when needed. It's about cherishing each step, each moment of guidance, and each instance of His comforting presence. The still waters symbolize the peace and restoration God offers, inviting us to pause, reflect, and be rejuvenated in His presence. Here, we lay down our burdens, drink deeply from the fountain of life, and emerge refreshed. In these moments, we're reminded of God's unwavering promises and boundless peace, anchoring our hearts and minds. Our journey and experiences at the still waters testify to the spiritual nourishment God desires for us. He feeds us with His Word, fostering growth and resilience. As we abide in Him, our lives bear the fruits of His Spirit, enriching those around us. Moving forward, let's hold on to faith in God's promises, knowing that He leads, sustains, and protects us through every season. Let's find rest and comfort in His presence, knowing that He gently guides us closer to His peace with every step. Now, let's join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before You with hearts full of gratitude. You are our provider, healer, and source of peace. We thank You for Your blessings, for guiding us, and for leading us beside still waters where our souls find rest. Amen. Lord, I humbly come before you, acknowledging my faults and seeking your forgiveness. I know I've fallen short of your glory. Please purify my heart, renew my spirit, and guide me on the path of righteousness. Help me release any bitterness or resentment towards those who have wronged me, understanding that true freedom comes through forgiveness. Protect me from evil and help me resist temptation as I journey through life's highs and lows. May your word illuminate my path and guide my steps. When I feel weary and hopeless, restore my soul and lead me to the calming waters of your presence. In the powerful name of Jesus, I declare victory over every challenge I face. I reject feelings of confusion, fear, and discouragement, and I invite your peace, wisdom, and clarity into my life. Please extend your healing touch to me and my loved ones, shielding us from harm and covering us with your protection. 
Bless our daily activities, our work, and our times of rest. Let your favor shine upon us. As I pray alongside everyone listening, I'm thankful for every open heart before you. We stand together in faith, seeking your guidance and your will. Bless us with the assurance of your presence, leading us to places of tranquility and nourishment. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, empowering us to share your love with others. We claim victory in every aspect of our lives, praying for healing, provision, and comfort for those in need. Guard us against the schemes of the enemy, ensuring that no harm comes to us. May your presence go with us, surrounding us with peace and filling us with joy. All glory belongs to you, now and forever. Thank you for hearing and answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.